rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Father, God, forgive us our sins that we may be worthy to stand before you in prayer. See, we're two or three together together in your name, there you are in the midst. Our faith tells us that that's legit. And we appreciate your presence in the midst of us right now. Our expectation is that you will touch our hearts and our minds today and reveal something of yourself that will strengthen us in you that will cause us to be more effective in drawing other people to you. Perfect in us, Lord God, those things that you have planted. The ministry that you placed in us, Lord God, we're asking you to continually work in us, even as Paul said, toward that mark of perfection. And we press, realizing that we've not attained and never being in a position to judge others, but only to assist in accordance with how you reveal to us. And so we ask you, let our ministry be done in love. Yes. Motivated by it. Whether it be our families, even ourselves, and truly our ministry to our God. Yes. You. Let it be driven by love. Let it be sustained by love. Yes. Lord God, so help us this day to grow more in love through the conversations that we, that to include you, are about to have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things I wanted to uh, kind of follow up with last week, and, and I was thinking, maybe, it, it, it remember the, the conversation we had uh, with, um, it was last week, I think it was last week, or a week for last, where, uh, it was week for last, because I haven't done the video for last week, but it was the time when Brother Addison uh, went to a Waffle House, you remember that? And he he's supposed to have God told him to go talk to, you hear the voice of God to go talk to the person. And he didn't go any further. He paid for that lunch, but he didn't go, remember Jim that one? He didn't go and talk to them. He paid for their, their meal, their breakfast. And, and then when he said he got convicted, when he left the place to, uh, and God said, I have told you to go talk to them. And, and he didn't talk. But, you know, God was just giving correction about eating to the voice of God and doing his will as we walk this walk. You remember that? Of course. Okay. And, and, and one part, you was very focused on it with the danger of not doing his will or hearkening to his voice when he tells you to do something. Uh, and I was, and I, you know, we went back and forth. I was saying as well, I'm not really focused on too much of him, but I focus on the fact is that if if this ram doesn't do it, the ram in the bush that doesn't do it, or the the sacrifice, you know, like the Moses when he was supposed to cruci sacrifice Isaac, and 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 he stopped the process. He wanted to see how far Abraham will go to to sacrifice. Isaac and when he said don't kill him but he had another sacrifice the ram in the bush to to do a sacrifice and what I said sometime is that I believe and I, I think it's uh, important to, to understand that his will will be done if Elder Johnson doesn't do it he got somebody like a Jimmy Hill that will do what he needs done for a particular person in time it may not it, it's, it's not to give the other person an excuse. It's just the fact is that God's will will be done whether you're going to be the one he's going to use or he's going to send somebody else. However, just like, uh, what was, was it Noah, Jimmy? It was Noah. Not Noah, but uh, Jonah. When uh, he was sent to, talk, he, was, he went to, uh, he was going to Nineveh. And he said to go to Tarshish. I think the danger was that because he went to Tarshish he, on that boat, <laughs> he was he was kicked off the boat and spent three days in the belly of the well, or the fish, 
and then he was kicked out, spit out, and head on to it. Then he went on to Nineveh. So Jimmy, is that kind of like the danger you're talking about? Well, the thing about it is, is that I just didn't want to give the impression that if we dis, if we be disobedient to, to the voice of God, which in fact, let's just call it what it was, that's what he was. He was disobedient to the voice of God. I don't want to give the impression that, oh, you can just be disobedient, but that's cool because God's going to still get glory. Yeah, God will still get glory, but you need to check yourself about disobedience because disobedience is disobedience. And obviously you want to be obedient to the voice of God. And your first example, though, um, about the ram in the bush, see, the thing about that is that he didn't say, no, I'm not going to kill my son or he or didn't do it. He actually was going to kill it. So he was being obedient. He was doing exactly what God told him to do. God right. stopped him. God stopped him from doing what he told him to do. In other words, now if, if Myron had a witch to start, start it over there and God stopped him halfway and said, no, I just want to see where you're going to go, then I could see those scenarios being the same. But it really wasn't because he actually did. And then and when you read about it in the New Testament, the way it's worded in the, in the New Testament, he actually did kill him because he said that he had in a figure, he was able to raise him from the dead. So it was kind of like he was absolutely obedient. You know what I'm saying? And so I right. just... I just didn't want to give the impression that, uh, well, that's okay. You could be disobedient, but God will still get the glory. Well, Saul was told to kill everything, and he didn't. But he sacrificed all those animals to God that he kept. Okay, was he disobedient or uh, not? He was disobedient. But still, sacrifices went up to God. And people can say, well, at least there were sacrifices. But just because you sacrificed to God, I heard him say a lot of times that, there was a, a nasty stench in his nose that he didn't even want your sacrifice and everything. So, so, so disobedience, I think once you be, you do, you're disobedient, that's what you need to deal with, not what could come after it or what God could get, because God is God, of course, but we need to deal with the disobedience. And then I think we need to teach that for the most part, be obedient. And then if you was disobedient in one particular instance, then you learn from that, like riding a bicycle, and then the next time the voice is clearer and then you 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 make up your mind to I'm not going to make that mistake again. And so I just didn't want to give off the impression that, hey, you can just be disobedient. God will still get the glory. It doesn't matter because that I think that's far from the truth. Right. I don't want to figure this situation. Yeah. In that situation, Saul actually had the kingdom ripped from him because of that. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the prophet said obedience is better than sacrifice. That's correct. So the the oh man, obedience is paramount. We can't uh, we can't do it our way. You know, and no matter no matter how what our intentions are, how good our intentions might be, once we step outside of obedience, we've stepped into evil. No matter what 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 our natural heart tells us, to say, oh God, this would be better for you than this would be. I'll do this instead. Or I'll build a big church. Instead of love my wife or, or whatever, but right, it doesn't work. And, and I think that's because God sees, He sees everything. He knows the impact of my action right now, a thousand years from now. Yes, sir. And, and I know. I, I used to often say that, you know, because a lot of people just like God said six days work and labor, and then one day of rest. We do five and two. I said to, I've often said that anytime we think that we're improving. <laughs> on God's plan, then that's where we have lost our minds and, and we've got to be nuts because you're not going to improve on what he said. So the best thing to do is to do what he said because obviously he's the creator and uh, it all kind of ties together because of his plan. And so sometimes we think we know better than him or we can improve on what he said. That's impossibility. You know, right. what's really funny about that is that I oftentimes lose sight of the fact that he is actually implementing the plan of salvation for every individual, every individual that comes to this planet, and he's doing it simultaneously. It's like at one now, at this very moment, the Lord is working to save the planet, in a sense. Yes, I mean, yes sir. How can I? I can't begin to encompass the, the intricacies of that. <laughs> it's like that is way too complex in my thoughts. I can't even. I can't even think about saving every individual in my house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I, if I can just stick to what he tells me to do, 
I think it'll work in the grand scope of things to save somebody that I probably never might not know that I even met. But something's going to happen to impact the lives of people that we don't know. Well, we don't think we're not aware of anyway. If I'm just obedient, it's going to help somebody I don't even know get saved. Right. Well, your chances, your chances of survival as the sheep is grassly is uh, is vastly improved if you listen to the shepherd. If Amen, you decide man. you gonna do what you decide you gonna do what the heck you want to do, you gonna have some problems. Yes, sir. Yep. And, and I think he allowed those problems to come to bring us into submission. You know, it's like the two he gotta teach ways. us. We teach need to be taught. Yeah, we gotta be taught. I yep. think that, and I think that's the key piece I want to actually focus on. The fact is that when 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 we we say obedience uh and we talk about someone coming into the body of christ uh how obedient is the expectation for them as far wow. as their growth knowledge the, the knowledge base is going to determine a lot as they learn i think as we learn we became more obedient. There's a word that says there's a way to seem right to a man in there of his death. And I can honestly say that I had, in my own judgment, made some decisions that at the moment seemed to be the right thing to do. It wasn't exactly in line with the Lord in the sense that I didn't even ask him what I should do. I just figured it out, if you know what I mean. Come on. I came to the conclusion after looking at the evidence that this is what I should do. Exactly. And man, I feel horrendous. I mean, it, it not it, even the people that I was trying to help suffered for it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It tore, it tore up a lot of stuff, man. And it, and and I'll be honest with you, the repercussion of it, I, I have not outlived. It's still it's still with me. The, the 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 what do you call it? The 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 uh, consequence. The fallout. The fallout that yeah. It, yeah. that occurred. It, it's like it's still poisoning things. <laughs> And, uh, wow. And, and, and I started out with the greatest of intentions, but I killed off a lot of stuff um, <laughs> because I didn't I didn't query God. And when I when the trial had ended, for me, the, le the learning portion of it anyway, I, I just heard this little spirit, I mean, voice in the back of my mind said, stick to the script. Stick to the script. <laughs> stick to the script. <laughs> you ain't got to get creative, just stick to the script, yo. Yep. Amen. And that was it. Just stick to the script. And man, I'm sitting there smoldering, you know. <laughs> Exactly. Stick to the script. And, 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 as, and the script is that, that for me, is understand with preaching first that a person must be born again. And, and all the way in, in this coming into his kingdom, Jimmy, is then understand is that God, and I know one time we had a conversation before where I think you said opposite what I was saying on this piece. I always say, come as you are. And I think one time you said that that's not what the word says. And, and I'm saying is when we minister to people, we do want them to come as they are. Because the only person going to change them is Christ, not themselves. Right? Well, basically, it's not in the Bible, but, but, but then too. And it's because of us. It's because of us that people think um, I need to take a wash up before I get in the shower. It makes yeah. no sense. You can't clean yourself up. I understand what you're saying when you say come as you are. In other words, don't try to wait till you get right. Don't try to wait till you change this. Well, I mean, I know I do all kind of craziness, so I ain't gonna come to church right now because I know what I, how I live. Well, that's the wrong mentality, but people have that mentality because of church folk, not because of the Bible, because that's not what the Bible teaches, but we've given that people the impression of that. And so that's what they think because of us, you know. Uh-huh. Well, you know, the, the, the scripture, when I when I know that, you know, we did the one about the uh, the banquet, when he said, go in the highways and the byways, you know, bring <laughs> the good and the bad. Yeah. Uh, that's what I would refer to, because it's, he's, a, he's calling, he's calling people to his kingdom. He's, he's reconciling us to, to him. And we as ambassadors are supposed to reconcile the world. And I, I don't know how to reconcile them opposite of saying, come as you are, you know. Um, well, in other words, I hear what you're saying, because yeah, everybody is invited. That's 
that's the key to that. Uh, everybody's invited regardless. And so that's that's what we have to understand that everybody, he wants to, he, the Bible says it's God's will that, that none should perish, mm-hmm. but that all should come to repentance. And so obviously he wants everybody to come. But uh, we, you know how we, you know, we're the biggest disqualifiers of people on earth. We always want to say who ain't saved and who can't make it and who, who ain't this and they ain't that and they ain't that. And I mean, I don't, I just, I don't know. I cringe when I hear those kind of statements being made because I don't think that's my responsibility or nor my job, nor my, my position of authority to be worried about, to be honest with you. Exactly. I, I think that's the whole point. And I think that's what's so critical about, I think that's what that wisdom comes to about saying he is wise when souls is the fact is that they, they are going to come in different aspects of life uh, as you approach them and talk to them about the gospel. They're going to come, look, even from a political side, they'll come whether you're a Democrat or Republican. You know, you're supposed to come. Uh, you come whether you're in prison or you're not in prison. Uh, you, you, he, he just tells us to reconcile that world and then let them grow in Christ. And that's critical. And, and what hey, I want to start off with was the. I just uh, want to say this: it's some, it's, it's going to be some Trump supporters in heaven. It's going to be some Republicans. <laughs> it's going to be some Republicans in heaven. It's going to be some Democrats. It's going to be some Independents. It's going to be some. I don't care nothing about government. They're going to be there too. You know what I'm saying? I know it. Hey, look, it's going to be different. Look, different colors, different races. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. There's <laughs> one. I mean, and we think it turns to that. Lord help me because y'all do have to help me on this. I have a tendency to kind of like my mom says, like the kingdom of God is a government unto itself. And it overrides every government on the planet. So when Amen. I invite a person to come into the kingdom, I'm actually asking them to disavow in a sense or, or, or I, I guess change the citizenship. You know, it's yeah. like you were a member of the, and, and every system aside from the kingdom of God to me is a system in the world. So the Democrat, the United States of American government is a world system, it's a world government. And I'm literally trying to draw people out of that governmental system into the kingdom, which aligns them in a lot of ways with that governmental system, but it does not become their basis for behavior or, or standard of, 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 of their, their value standards. Well, so I really, I am subversive in the sense that I want people to join the kingdom of God. I want them to just come out from among them and be you separate. Join the kingdom of God, which is the everlasting kingdom, whose principles are righteous, whose everything that it does is perfect. If you can do it in accordance with the kingdom of God, you have heaven on earth. And that, that's how I kind of approach it. Um, the practices in the world system that don't align themselves with the kingdom of God I don't initially, you know, jump on that about people because they got to get in the kingdom first. You got to catch your fish to say before you can scale it. So we have to, like recruiters, from where we're sitting anyway, we show them the benefits of being in the kingdom. And after they come into the kingdom, then we start to address um, the growth in the spirit. Right. So right. they got to be born again. Got to get you into the kingdom. Got to accept Jesus Christ the Lord. So can they come as they are? Uh, when, I, when we joined the military, we came as we were. But shortly after we came in, <laughs> we would change dramatically, you know? Yeah. And I think <laughs> we, we start thinking about uh, can we submit to that that dynamic? Can we submit to the thing that Christ is doing in our lives? Or, right. or are you actually being drawn to a point where you don't want what you are uh, now? You know, it's impossible almost just to bring a person into the kingdom that's satisfied with the life that they have. I think, I think, I think, you know, isn't it a fact that we really draw them to a relationship? Um, mm-hmm. and, and, and that, and I exactly. Think that's, that's critical, is that relationship. Yes. Uh, that, that we want him to come into. And, and one of the scriptures uh, I wanted to share with you, start off with, the sudden like a foundation to work with, is uh, these scriptures here. If you can uh, read that, because I want them to, I want them to have, you see that title that said, Peace with God through faith. Right? Right. And 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 and, and it's, it's going to be about talk about that grace. This is Romans chapter Rome, this is chapter five, uh, verse one, but it, it, this whole chapter is really 
introducing, because you know, after I get into six, we talk about the issues we have. Uh, seven, we talk about the, the, the conflicts that we have in our, in our flesh, right? Uh, we have a lot of conflicts. But, but the point is that we, we still have grace to come into the kingdom. And that's why I want to make sure I understand. So if you read that one through seven first, that'd be great. And therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace where we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. Knowing that tribulation work in patience. Amen. In patience experience and experience hope. In hope make it not ashamed. Because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. But when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the ungodly. Come on now. He died for the ungodly. <laughs> for scarcely for a righteous man would one die, yet peradventure for a good man, someone would even dare to die. Even dare to die. And see, Jeremy, that's another one of that uh, come as you are, because he, he died for the ungodly. Um, and I wanted, but the main thing about it is for that person to know that he, he, he is coming, he's calling you. He loved you first. I think one of the scriptures after this will follow the fact is he loved you first. He loved you in your weakness. He loved you. And, and he wants to receive you through love and let you grow through grace. It's, it's critical for me, for, for me, for our spiritual people coming to the kingdom. I, and I think as you move forward through the gospel, through your growth in Christ, if you want to be used by him, then you got to learn, as Bishop Compton says, you got to learn how to die to self, you know? But I, I need you to come in as who you are. And then I need you to learn that you have that relationship with him so you can grow in him. And that growth is through grace. Now, as you get older, like as an elder, right? You, you know how that grace you, you know, you, as a babe, baby has a lot of grace, right? But some of that grace kind of changed a little bit as you get older, right? The expectation changes. Uh, you expected to know better than when you came in in the first place, right? There is, there is a, um, a definitely says that those who give much, much is required. He who doesn't, don't know will be beaten with a few stripes, but he who does will be beaten with many. Yeah. Yeah. So there is there's there's an accountability system that's in place for us. Right. But if we think about what the ultimate goal of the accountability is, is to transform us to the the the, uh, the image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Nazareth, who is the prototype of our kind. Mm -hmm. In that spiritually, love, joy, peace, long suffering, patience, meekness, gentleness, faith, temperance, these these fruits are being wrought in us and made evident through our behavior to others who hopefully be drawn to Christ through what they see working in and through us. Right. So we're being literally transformed. If I go, you know, there's certain behaviors that I had when I was in the world system that I assure you wouldn't draw you to Christ. It might draw you, but it wouldn't draw you to the Lord. And, and, and because of that, the person would not receive eternal life. So we're actually being used of God as visual aids, I think, in addition to, you know, our behavior. He's using us to be an enticement to others to come to him. I think so.